Good afternoon, my chemistry minions. Video lecture number four for nuclear chemistry, the last video of the unit, and the last video for your notes for the year. Woohoo! Don't watch it more than once, or, you know, three or four times. However, when you need. But here we go. Understand the definition of radioactive half lives. We did this in living in, or not living environment, but in earth science. We used it to, to date some of the rocks. We're going to get a little bit deeper into what it is and why it works. Uh, we're going to use table N to find the half-lives for various isotopes. And we're going to have to do some math to figure some stuff out with this whole half-lives. Okay? No fraction freakouts are allowed. Did you hear? Say that with me now. No fraction freakouts are allowed. We're going to deal with it. It's not that hard. Um, how long is a radioisotope going to be radioactive? Well, it depends on this natural transmutation that occurs. We call that a half-life. How long until half of it is gone? Okay, we can we can figure that out, and it's very stable. One thing you need to know, it doesn't change with temperature or mass or anything. The half-life is specifically for a particular kind of isotope, and it is constant. Radioactive substance decay at a constant rate do not depend on any other factors such as Temperature, pressure, or concentration. Remember, you are making annotations in these notes or you are not getting full credit. I don't care if you highlight or underline, but you had better have done something to show me that you are listening along. Okay? An unstable nucleus would decay. It's, it is a completely random process. The only thing that is, I can't tell you which atom is going to decay, but I can tell you that overall, after so many years, or so after a half-life, there will be exactly half the atoms. I can't predict which one, though, okay? So the half-life, or the time it takes for half of the mass to decay, is very important, and Table N will list them for me, okay? The various isotopes and their half-lives. And here they are. And there's a lot of information in here, because let's take gold-198, for instance. It has 2.69 days. D is days. MS is milliseconds, MIN is minutes, S is seconds, Y is years. Okay, H is hours. Did I leave any out? I don't think so. Okay, but those I believe are also listed in the reference table somewhere so you know that what each one of those stands for. Here's the key. You don't have to memorize that it's what we would call um, it's beta decay. You don't have to memorize that. And just look it right up, right? That gold does beta decay, and then it gives me the name of my nucleotide. Okay, so this is all very important stuff as far as I can get a lot of information out of one measly little chart that's actually not that little. Oh, and look here, bam. MS is milliseconds, S is seconds, MN is minutes. Don't even have to memorize that, okay? This is something that needs to you need to understand, though. If I have a short half-life, I must not be very stable. If half of me is gone in a day, I'm reacting really fast. If half of me is gone over 10,000 years, I'm actually fairly stable. It takes a long time to have that change. There's something logically that needs to make a little sense for you. Okay. Now, in Table T, there's a little some formulas to talk about half-life. Okay. The half-life N is little t over t where little t is the total time elapsed, big T is the half-life that I get from table N. The fraction remaining is one-half raised to the t over t, or one-half raised to the N. Well, one-half raised to the N is a little bit easier, so let me just do this real quick so you guys don't flip out. Ready? If I go through three half-lives, okay, that's one-half raised to the N, which would be, this becomes one-half to the third, which is really just one half times one half times one half, which becomes one times two over two to the third, or one times two times two times two, which equals two times two is four times two is eight, one eighth. Okay, there's a real quick explanation of what the fraction is going to do. And we're going to do a few of these, and you're going to get the hang of it. And then you're going to do the practice on the math, and you're going to get the hang of it. You're going to do the candy lab, or the M&M lab, and you're really going to get the hang of it. And yes, you get to eat the M&Ms when you're done. But not until you're done. And that's it. And then we'll call it a year. We'll start reviewing, and we'll have a good time. we still got to take a test on this and do you know, some, some stuff. 
Okay, example, most chromium atoms are stable, but CR51 is an unstable isotope with a half-life of 28 days. So the big T is the half-life, so that is 28 days. Okay, what fraction of the sample will remain after 168 days? Well, the little t is the amount of time, so that's 168. Okay, so n, the number of half-lives, is little t divided by big T, 168 divided by 28, 168 divided by 28 equals 6 half-lives. And just real quick, let me show you, if you're listening, you'll understand why I'm going to write this. Let me do 28 divided by 168, okay? Now let me just explain this a little bit. One, type this in a middle calculator. It says 0 0.166. Do, can I have a part of a half-life? No. So if you do this by accident, you're going to get this really little number, and we it's not right. Okay, the total time divided by um, the half-life is going to give me the number of half-lives, and it should be a nice whole number. Okay, fraction remaining now is one-half raised to the six, or I could say one-half times one-half times one-half times three more. One-half times one-half times one-half. Okay, so in my calculator, I'm just going to go 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 1 over a number. Wait, I shouldn't write anything. Else. It's going to be 1 over something, but I'm going to do this in the calculator quick. And the reason why I know it's 1 right off the bat isn't 1 times 1 times 1 still 1? One? 1 times anything, or 1 times 1 is still 1, no matter how many of them I have. Let me do this. 2 times 2 times 2, which is 3 of them, times 2 is 4, times 2 is 5, times... I have 6 twos. 64. 1 64th. I will have 1 64th the amount that I used to have. So now here's an example. If a sample of CR51 has an original mass of 52 grams, what mass will remain after 168 days? Well, I just did the legwork on the 168 days. I figured if I have 168 days and the half life is 28, I went through six half lives. If I go through six half lives, the fraction remaining is 1 64th. So now I just say 52 grams times 1 over 64, which essentially is 52 divided by 64. I will have 0 0.8125 grams remaining. So in that example, we just did basically all the math you're going to have to be able to do. Okay. C, how much was present originally of a sample of CR51 if 0.75 gram remains after 168 days? Hint, calculate the number of half-lives that have passed. Use the fraction freakout to remain for the above. Well, we just did this. We just did 168, correct? And 168 was... Six half lives. Six half lives was one sixty fourth. Well, one sixty fourth of times. Or let me not use an, an x as a times and a variable. One sixty fourth of some number x is going to equal 0.75. Well, in order to solve for x, I need to divide both sides by one sixty fourth. Okay. And to do that, I'm going to say 0 0.75 times 64 is really how it works out. X equals 48 grams. And I know that because if I want to get rid of a fraction on this side, I could just multiply by the reciprocal. 64 over 1, and the 64s will cancel, and the 1s will cancel. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other, so 64 over 1. Or I understand that if I divide by a fraction, I'm actually multiplying by the denominator of that fraction if I remember that math. Yes, I said that very fast because that's how I do it, I guess. Sorry, I could slow down a little. How do we detect something that we can't see? We use it, what's called a Geiger counter. Okay. Steps to determine half-life from a graph. It says... 
draw a vertical line anywhere from one y value onto the curve to half its y value. Now turn 90 degrees and draw a horizontal line to the right over to the distance. Okay, example. What is the half life of the substance illustrated in the graph? Okay, well. Okay, so let's do. What is the half life? So if I'm at 50, 25 is here, right? And it's about 25 days. So when I went from 50 to 25, it took 25 days. Okay. Uh, I went from 30 to 15, 40 to 20. 40, first to change some colors. 40 to 20 grams is, because the side is grams. So 40 to 20. So here's 40. Follow it down. It looks like 10, 20, about 10. And 20 is about, oh, apparently 35 to keep it 25. So this is how we do it graphically. And you will have to graph your decay in the M&M &M lab. Least important. We do just need to use the, um, the half-life strategy, okay? Um, carbon-14 dating. Um, yeah, not that kind of dating, silly. It's radioactive carbon dating. Let's me know about it. You can research it a little bit more following that link. Um, the uranium. Now, these links aren't active. Of course, you'll have to type the stuff in. Um, uranium to lead gives me nuclear energy. We've heard of uranium rods. Guys, we're just about done. I went through that half-life stuff really fast. Okay, so now what's really important is you use what we just did with the half-life stuff to do this practice. You're going to have to practice a lot. I'm not going to give you a lot of practice in these notes. You want to be done with the notes. I kind of want to be done with the notes, but I'm going to miss you guys something terrible. Um, now I can do my nuclear prep three and do my quiz number three and be done with my castle learning, at least for the units for now. And then we're going to have to get into reviewing for that big, bad final exam. So that's it. Last notes are done. You guys can do half-lifes now with a little bit more practice. I'm sure you'll get good at it. And we are done. Peace out, Green Sprout.